So one of the greatest features that we actually find within Microsoft 365 Defender is our ability to be able to customize the various settings for this particular solution. So if we go to our endpoint manager, which is open over here, and we go to devices, we'll be able to create these within our configuration profiles. So all the way down, we have configuration profiles here under policies, so select that. And again, we can also work with these profiles based on the various operating systems that we have within our environment. But for now, let's just go ahead and create one that focuses on our Windows devices because that is what we just recently looked at. So under platform, we'll go ahead and select Windows 10 and later, and here, I've already emphasized on this feature in the previous video. So if we click on templates, you'd realize that we have the ability to customize the various control settings for our devices. We have delivery optimization, we have a firmware configuration interface if we want to control the various BIOS settings and UFI configurations for the different devices, we can do that. We have device restrictions if we want to control what devices are allowed on board, etc. we can work with that as well. We have device restriction for Windows team, domain join, there is just a lot. In fact, I have always referred to this as the holy grail for our Microsoft 365 Defender features. You can literally do everything you need within this particular area. Now, our interest now is to look at the virus endpoint protection settings. So click on that, go ahead and click on create, and this allows us to look at the various settings for Defender for endpoint. So let's say this is for Windows devices with our environment. And if we select next, this brings us into the configuration settings area. So here we can begin the various settings that we'd like to implement for different areas that we actually have within our environment, be it firewalls, or maybe you're interested in the smart screen features, or it's encryption using BitLocker, whatever it is that we simply want to configure is all here. For instance, if we look at the Defender Application Guard, this is one of my favorite features. This feature would actually allow your users to be able to browse on unsecure or malicious sites using Microsoft's cloud-based container, and thereby in the event that something goes wrong, the risk and impact remains with Microsoft. So we can actually implement this. Uh, if we've got maybe a red team that would like to use it or simply users who are within our IT department, we can enable such features for them. So we would say application guard, let's enable that. And then we can look at clipboard behavior, external content or enterprise sites. If we'd like to block those, we can do so print from virtual browser, if we'd like users who are browsing on that virtual environment to be able to print, then we can also go ahead and allow them to do so. We also could have an interest in the kind of logs that are collected. So we may simply want to make sure that, oh, we'd like to allow this feature in order for us to have the visibility into the various activities in that particular area, retain user-generated browser data, graphic acceleration, etc. So all these are features that we can work with under the application guard area. Now, we also have the Defender Firewall options. We have the Smart Screen feature. This actually allows you to block certain activities, especially when it comes to applications or files that are not verified. We simply want to make sure that you have those blocked within your environment. How about Windows encryption? Of course, this is an important feature. For us to be able to encrypt all the devices we have in the environment, we'll simply go ahead and require every device that is onboarded to be encrypted so that in the event that that device is lost or it's stolen, the data that is stored on that device would simply remain secure. Encrypt storage card, especially in mobile devices where you have an SD card that could be removed by anybody at any point. So you'd like to make sure that that particular feature is required. So there's just a lot of features that we can actually work with. And when you look at these categories, we'll be able to tell whether what we have within our environment aligns with what is provided in that area, and if we'd like to make some adjustments. Now let's go ahead and look at the local device security options. And over here, we have a lot of subcategory options as well. You have accounts, you have devices, you have interactive login, etc. And if you go to devices, we have options such as undock devices without login. Now, if you've got a docking station in your environment and you have multiple devices that are actually docked in there, you might simply want to prevent this from happening, ensuring that anybody who has to undock devices must first of all be logged in. So all these features here would simply be pointing to your endpoint device. You have restricting CD access, you have formatting and ejecting removable media, and then you have interactive login. And from here, we can also carry out a lot of configurations. For example, we'd like to set the amount of time that should actually lapse while a screen is active. And we can set this up in minutes to say after maybe two minutes of being inactive, the screen saver should actually kick in. So these are configurations that we can also set up. We can hide last signed in 
user. We can look at the various login information. For example, if we'd like to have a welcome message for every person who actually signs in, we could simply go ahead and say, hey, welcome to CBT Nuggets, or whatever the name of our organization is that we'd like to see in that particular area. So these are configurations that we can now set up without even the use of group policies within our environment. And if we take a look at recovery console and shutdown options, you have options such as clearing virtual memory after shutting down the feature. This is really great to just free up that information. We'd like to enable that. And you can go ahead and block the feature that allows users to shut down systems without them being logged in. So with that in place, let's go ahead and select next over here. And this simply allows us to assign this to the various Windows devices and users that we have within the environment. We must never forget the importance of excluding users who should not be part of this policy. All right, let's go ahead and click next. This is the applicability rules section that allows us to specify the various types of rules we'd like to see within our environment. Maybe we'd like to only allow a certain version of operating system. We can go ahead and specify that. Say, so, okay, this is gonna be for Windows 10 Enterprise. Perhaps we'd also want to see it on Windows Home if we have those or Windows Pro. Now, once we have that, the next step allows us to just do a review of our configuration and we'll be able to go ahead and create it. Now, these policies may take some time and if it happens that you not see the settings you may have configured, it is always great to give it a bit of time before you can test this out. So I've got my Windows 10 device over here, and the moment you try to sign in, the very first thing you'd notice is that I do not have the option to turn off this system while I'm not logged in. So this already has been disabled. And if I sign in as one of the users in this particular device, You'd notice that immediately Microsoft Defender begins to suggest some of the solutions that we have implemented. For example, we saw a pop-up there for encryption, which is now required on this particular device. So if we select it over there, you'd see your work also requires this device to be encrypted. So if we select that option, we then can begin the process of encrypting this particular device. And that is how we can benefit from the various settings that we can set up within our environment to ensure that all the devices we have are compliant to the security settings required within our environment. And for now, my friend, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching and remember to hit that subscribe button to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. And if you are new to IT or just keen to sharpen your IT skills, then be sure to check out cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.